Since the day Willie Taggart stepped on awesome. campus in December, fans have been awaiting this moment. Florida State takes on Virginia Tech Monday night football, 8 p.m. on ABC. Nolan Siders, Lane Hurt, Tim Lenefelt here with you for our game preview. Tim, we're out there on Thursday. Yeah. The team was wearing their new helmets that'll go with their black uniforms with music blaring during practice, dancing, smiling. It's been a whole new culture at Florida State. What that means on the field, we're not sure yet. What are your thoughts on everything that's kind of led up to this moment, game time here in, in Tallahassee? It really is kind of remarkable how different things are, what a difference, I mean, really what a difference a year makes, but even just a few months, like you mentioned, the, the music at practices, uh, just the fact that practices are held in the morning, of course, that was a, a holdover from the spring, but it, it feels different now uh, that it's in the fall, classes are in session, all that sort of thing going on, and then, of course, that, that point hit home earlier this morning, or early Thursday morning, uh, when the, the team walked out wearing their, their black and garnet helmets, because they're going to wear those black uniforms against Virginia Tech, so, yeah, man, I mean, you just kind of get the sense that, uh, you know, somebody uh, asked me a few weeks ago, they said, does it feel like a, a breath of fresh air uh, around Florida State and around the football program? It feels like, it's like a gust. <laughs> you know, a, a breath implies just, you know, a few little details here and there, but it's, it's like a completely different program. Obviously, some of the faces are the same and, and you know, some of the people uh, that you're familiar with, but the overall thrust of everything, uh, the overall, I guess, tone surrounding the football program is completely different. And, and now, you know, you, you sort of daydream. Back in March, you think, you know, I wonder what it's going to be like when you, when you get this coaching staff out there and, and these players and this attitude. What's it going to be like? How is that going to translate on the field? And you sort of, you know, you wonder and you think about it and you kind of kick it around in your mind. Finally, now, nine months later, feels like maybe the, the longest nine-month offseason we've ever had. Uh, we're going to find out. Uh, I don't know exactly what to expect. Like you said, you don't either. Uh, look, Willie Taggart himself at his press conference today said, look, there's all kinds of, you know, nervousness and you're wondering. You, don't, you just don't know what you have until you see it for the first time. And finally, uh, we're all going to see it for the first time. It's funny you say that because normally a game preview, we kind of talk about what the, the Florida State will look like against Virginia Tech. Well, you know, for the first time in a while, we really don't know what Florida State's going to look like. So let's talk a little bit more about Florida State and less about Virginia Tech, starting with the obvious. DeAndre Francois, named quarterback yeah. for, for, for the starter. He beat out James Blackman and Bailey, Bailey Hockman. What are your thoughts on Francois through camp and why he earned that, that gig? I think it's a really good sign for Florida State that, that he has that job. I think that well, he's Florida State's most experienced quarterback, even uh, assuming that he and James Blackman have been starters for, for a season each. He's been here the longest time. He's a fourth-year junior. Uh, he says, your most experienced guy, been a college quarterback for the longest amount of time. I think he's their best option. So it's good, I think, and it's a sign of the way things should be, uh, that he was able to win that job, to able to, to get a hold of the playbook and, and a hold of what Willie Taggart wanted him to do in a fairly short amount of time. He, you know, he, he was limited during the spring, so he didn't have the, the full experience with those other two guys. Just the fact that he was able to come in, uh, learn the playbook quickly, and, and kind of tailor his skill set to that and show Willie Taggart what he needed to see, to me, that's a good sign for Florida State's offense. Uh, why was he able to do that? Well, I think it's, it, you know, I don't think there's any real reason to make it more complicated than it is. I think he's got the the best arm. I think he's got the most accurate arm. I think he probably brings the most to the table with his legs. And when you talk Florida State's offense, you can go a lot of different directions. Let's start with tempo. Coach Taggart says he wants it to be fast, but is it going to be running a play every 13 seconds fast? What kind of tempo should fans expect, do you think, on, on Monday? You know what? It's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be fast, and I think the, the every 13 seconds thing is a possibility. But, you know, Willie Taggart has also alluded a few times to say, look, we're going to run tempo. But we're not going to do it just to do it, you know, and if there's a situation where it makes more sense to be a little bit more slow, uh, they're going to do that as well. But I think what they like to do is to kind of get into a rhythm, get things clicking, get things humming, uh, and, and sort of let that tempo continue to build. You know, what's, what's interesting about the, that, the offense that I've seen in, in camp, both in the spring and fall, is like, you know, it kind of looks a little bit conventional at first. It's the, it's the sum total of, of the plays run together where you really see what the offense is capable of. And, you know, you, it'll manifest itself in ways like, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll watch them out of the practice fields, it'd be first down, you know, a run up the middle for a few yards, second down, maybe an incomplete pass. But by, you know, if you move the chains, third, fourth, or fifth drive in the play, uh, the offense is getting, or excuse me, the defense is getting a little bit more out of sync every time. They have a hard time lining up, a hard time getting their signal. And all of a sudden, you look uh, one play when you least expect it, and there's, I don't know, Trey McKitty running 40 yards down the field with nobody in his zip code. That's sort of how this thing happens. It builds successively from one play to the next, and the tempo is a part of that. But just getting into that rhythm and, and keeping the defense off kilter is a, is a big part of it. So the tempo is a facet of it, a big facet of it, but it's not the only thing. 
So with that said, what would be the biggest strength in your mind? The offense, to me, I would say the running backs led by Cam Akers and Jack Patrick, you're, you're and, and that's kind of the tip of the iceberg. And what might be the biggest question mark? To me, I would say the offensive line, a lot of new faces there, and depth may be an, an issue there as well. Yeah, I think that's fair. Well, I agree with you wholeheartedly uh, about the running backs. And in fact, one of the things I'm most intrigued to see is just how Willie Taggart uh, intends to use all these guys. I mean, you've got Cam Makers and Jacquez Patrick. We know about them already. Kalen LeBourne, one of the stars of the spring. I thought Amir Asul had a really, really nice camp. He's really fast and also pretty tough to tackle. And then a freshman who I don't think any of us were, were expecting to make a quick impact, Anthony Grant, has been one of the, the surprise breakout stars of the fall. They really, really like him. He's an impressive player. Are they going to find a way to get him the ball? We'll, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, and then, like you said, the offensive line in terms of, of, of question marks, I think that's probably fair just because so many guys were either hurt or playing a new position or playing for the first time. Jawan Williams, who has been the heir apparent at, at left tackle, will be playing in his first ever collegiate game. Uh, so, you know, you, you wonder what you're going to have in him. Landon Dickerson, who we know he's a really talented guard, is going to be playing right tackle for the first time. You know, Alec Everly, we know what kind of player he is. Uh, is he fully healthy? How's he feeling? Uh, you know, we, we know if, if he's full and healthy and, and is at full strength, Strength, he can uh, he can bring a lot to the table, uh, and so it's just a matter of, of putting it all together. One thing I do think is really encouraging about the offensive line is that, by and large, there's been a few little bangs and bruises here and there, but by and large, they found a unit on day one that they liked, and they pretty much stuck with it uh, throughout the length of fall camp. Now, a few little combinations here and there, but it was pretty easy to tell who the first choice offensive line was, and as a result, those guys have been practicing next to each other for four weeks now. Uh, they've been learning each other's tendencies, their idiosyncrasies, uh, getting that familiarity that I think you need to you know play as one unit instead of five individual guys and that's something that you know quite frankly we haven't seen around here in a while defensively harlan barnett takes over a talented group some might say they underachieved at times last year but also very good at times last year what are your impressions let's talk big picture of what barnett has brought to the defense you know, it's kind of, we talk so much about lethal simplicity on offense, but it, it really sort of sounds like the defense is echoing that. Uh, he's used that term a lot to describe uh, his defense. It's, they say it's less reading uh, and more attacking. You know, they want guys to, to act on their instincts and, and, and get to the ball. It's not, you know, trying to figure out where I'm supposed to be. It's not solving the Pythagorean theorem to figure out, you know, who you're covering or what your responsibilities are. It's very simple. It probably harkens back in some ways to what Mickey Andrews was running uh, in the in the 1980s and 90s with some of those athletes that he had you know they just it was sort of the philosophy was well we have a 11 one-on-one -on -one matchups and we're, we're going to line up and we're just going to beat you that's how it's going to go and so maybe it's only appropriate that Mickey Andrews is back on the practice field uh, you know working in the capacity with the, with the staff there but I think that's kind of you know where where, the, where their philosophies lie and, and to hear the players uh, so, I mean they, they really like it a lot you know they're not having again ask themselves too many questions they're able to rely on their instincts their athleticism and, and kind of go out and be football players yeah if there's one thing I've heard coach Barnett says is one of his things is he wants to swarm the ball all 11 guys to the ball you've watched practice you see that you if someone's behind not getting to the ball they hear about it from their position coach now let's transfer move on defensive line and to start there, you have to start with Brian Burns, who, let's be honest, he has absolutely ruined periods of practice <laughs> at times in a, in a good way with how well he has performed at times. Could be a big year for him, but there's an awful lot of talent there from the ends to the tackles. Where does this line, defensive line unit rank as, as far as what Florida State has had in the past? I mean, I think it's going to be, I expect it to be really good, particularly if everybody's healthy. And it sounds like they're moving in that direction. You know, Willie Taggart said the other day that both Marvin Wilson and Josh Kane and Dover expected to play, and, and those are two big pieces of Florida State's defensive line. But to, but to stick on Brian Burns for a minute, you know, there are times, and, and you've seen this, uh, you know, I've seen it with guys like, uh, like Jalen Ramsey was this way, uh, Timmy Jernigan was this way. You know, after a couple years, when, when guys get to be juniors and seniors, uh, they know what's up ahead if they have professional aspirations, that sort of thing. They just have a different way about them. You know, they have a different look to them. Physically, they look a little bit different, like they've been in the strength program a little bit longer. Uh, they know that, that they're in for a big year, and then they want to have a big year. Man, Brian Burns has that look about him. Like, the look on his face, I mean, he practices with an edge. Uh, I mean, he's, he's you know, talking to, to offensive players, letting them know what's coming. Uh, he's you know, been a monster in terms of rushing the pass or using that wingspan to get up and block passes. Uh, I mean, he's, yeah, I, I will be stunned, really, if, if he doesn't have a big year this year. So I would start with him, uh, move on to the Marcus Christmas and the inside there, Marvin Wilson, uh, two really big dudes. Uh, we, we know what kind of players they are anchoring the inside there. And then on the other side, it's, uh, I, you know, I think that we don't talk about this side as much, but, uh, but between Walvensky, Amy, and, and Janarius Robinson, I think they have some really nice players. I, I, I don't want to call them complimentary because I feel like that – 
uh, maybe sells them short a little bit, but I do think that they are really good compliments for what somebody like Brian Burns. I think Brian Burns and Walvensky Amy are really a good pair in terms of uh, the you know what they bring physically. Uh, you know, they are the good complements for each other, and I think it makes for a pretty nice uh, nice little tandem there. As far as the rest of the defense is concerned, secondary led by Levante Taylor, I think you can say there's a ton of talent there, a lot of depth. We'll see kind of who plays and who shakes out as, as, as the best in those that, that unit. We'll talk about that. But also the linebackers might be the biggest question mark on the defense. Some new faces, some guys who are a little maybe smaller than your traditional linebackers, but you know, yeah, I've talked to Coach Woody about this and just the way that offenses have changed. You need lighter guys as yeah. well. Let's, let's talk about those those two positions, uh, those two segments, and, and what they bring to the table for Florida State. Well, in terms of linebackers, I think it probably depends on what they're being asked to do. I can tell you this. They love to Kalen Brooks. The staff loves to Kalen Brooks. Uh, they've called it, the, the number one thing I've heard to describe him is that he's a football player. And I think if you're a coach, there's if, if a coach calls a guy a football player, say he's just a football player, there's like no higher compliment that a coach can give a player. So and you give you know figure his background, uh, who his dad is. We all know Derek Brooks. If there's anybody that understands how to play that position and do it well and do it with an edge, it's going to be to Kalen Brooks. And then the same goes for Jaden Woodby. Uh, I don't know that I've ever heard a staff be more high on a true freshman uh, than they are on. Jaden Woodby came in as a safety. They've got him down playing that star position, which is sort of the safety linebacker hybrid. Uh, they love what he brings to the table. He's number one on the depth chart there, slated to be the first uh, freshman to start on defense for Florida State in an opener uh, since Jalen Ramsey a few handful of years ago. And like you know, you don't want to compare a guy to uh, you know a player who ends up maybe being one of the best, probably the best defensive back in the NFL. But look, man, I mean that's that's the kind of that's the kind of uh, the company that you're keeping right now. We've talked about him in those terms, right? Right. And then Dontavious Jackson there in the middle. Uh, you know, it is interesting. He's the most experienced guy they've had, the most productive guy they've had, but it or had they have at the position. But it just sort of. And it goes to show you they have a lot of guys who I think they're uh, they they feel have a lot of promise and a lot of ability, uh, but a lot of it's you know it's just kind of unproven. Guys are going to be asked to do stuff they haven't done before, and you know, we'll, we'll see if it happens. Yeah. And then just with the secondary, I mean. I think it speaks volumes as a guy they really like in Hamza Nasrilladeen is not even slated to be a starter. He's behind uh, Samuels in the Stanford Samuels in the depth chart right now. He's got a lot of talent. It's, I think you're going to take a few weeks to find out, to shake out who their, their favorite guys are back there. Yeah, and I, you, you kind of read in between the lines with, between, with Harlan Barnett. You kind of get the sense that they're more interested in having the best players out there in the secondary regardless of whether they're playing corner or safety they want the guys that they feel are, are, are best suited for it and you know case in point is I thought Stanford Samuels with, with all due respect to Levante Taylor if, if Stanford wasn't the team's best cornerback in the spring he was awfully close he had a fantastic spring and, and looked really really good uh, and then they move him back to safety uh, right at the, at the outset of fall camp so uh, they want to get him you know in a position to make plays that that field safety position that they call it is a, is a really important sort of a do everything role for them. Uh, it speaks highly uh, to him to be, to be able to play that role so early in his career. Look, Levante Taylor, it's everything we just said about Brian Burns, you know, <laughs> put it in a cornerback's body and that's pretty much where we're at. I mean, he, he, he just looks fantastic out there. He carries himself with a different, different attitude than I think a lot of the guys. He has a look on his face that just says, I mean, he's just, he's all business and, and, and he's ready to make some things happen. And I also want to say real quick uh, to speak on, uh, on Kyle Myers and A.J. Westbrook. Uh, yeah. You know, those guys deserve, I think, a lot of credit at the safety and cornerback positions that they're holding down. Uh, there's some really talented youngsters that are coming for those jobs, uh, some freshmen and sophomores that I know a lot of people are really excited about. And I think both those guys deserve a lot of credit for holding them off and saying, hey, you know what, I'm the veteran here. Uh, I've, I've, I've got the experience and, and I'm ahead of you in my career because I should be. You know, I'm a junior, I'm a senior, and, uh, and all those guys are going to play, but I think it really does speak highly, and it's good for Florida State uh, that those veterans were able to do what they did and, and, and keep those starting jobs. And oh, by the way, there is a game on Monday night against Virginia Tech. Like I said, a, a typical game preview. We're going to talk more about the, the opponent, but in, in this case, it's a special circumstance. Florida State's first game under Willie Taggart, first chance to actually see what this team looks like with a new head coach. Virginia Tech, awfully good. Yeah. They replace a lot of faces on defense, but Bud Foster's always done a good job with that unit. A very good quarterback in Josh Jackson for the Hokies. What are going to be some of the keys? What's what's a big key to you in victory on Monday nights? Uh, the big thing for me is the details on offense. Uh, and, and by that I mean you got to be able to, to hang on to the ball, catch the ball when it, when it comes your way, particularly on some of those short routes that are designed to get the ball in space. And then you can't have any, and certainly 
many penalties, but any type of procedural penalties, any type of unforced errors, it just doesn't work. I was talking to, to Willie Taggart after a practice one day earlier this fall, and he said, look, this offense, it doesn't work if you're getting hung up by penalty flags or if you're getting out of rhythm by dropping the ball. If they can hang on to the ball and, and keep the sticks moving in that way and then not bog things down both in terms of tempo but also in terms of field position and, and sort of schedule with the plays, uh, if they can, they can avoid those things and keep the offense moving, even if it's just a little bit at a time, those big plays are going to come. So to me, it's – and those are the kind of little jitters that come up in, in first games, right? And those procedural penalties or false starts or alignments, whatever the case may be, uh, those are the things that you have to avoid. And if you can do that, I think you're going to be in pretty good shape. Well, there you have it, Seminole fans. Knowles and the Hokies Monday night. The Willie Taggart era begins. Stick with us all season long. We'll have plenty of content, highlights, and post-game reaction from players and coaches. Tim will have a breakdown written. He'll be on the field with a new colleague Jordan DiGiorgio as well as they break down the game at halftime, I believe, and post-game, correct? As often as they'll let us, yeah. There we go. That's the plan. Of course, we'll have everything you need this year. Follow us at Seminoles.com on social, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. We will have it all this year. Willie Taggart's first year at Florida State. For Tim, I'm Lane. Go Noles.